Hi, everybody. This is A Wee Bit of Alchemy, and I'm Rick Barrett. Tonight, we're going to be talking about a few things. First off, uh, uh, we're going to handle a few uh, questions that came up in our pre-chat conversation. And then we're going to explore substantial and insubstantial in the feet as a way to move into the second part, which is mobilizing that precedes movement. So uh, we're getting really internal now we're talking about the, uh, you know, what makes, what animates these, uh, these motions. So uh, uh, first off, uh, Lynn, you had a uh, uh, story and a question and uh, why don't you, uh, why don't you share? Yeah, I was uh, doing standing meditation the other morning and I did the grounding of the energy at the end to sort of, you know, disappear all the, all the used chi. And, uh, and after I did that, I just had this huge influx of a kind of a light flowing energy that just made me kind of want to move around like this and dance and, uh, so I guess I was curious whether that was a more common experience and if what I should do is just go with it uh, or thoughts on it. Great. Okay. Well, uh, from the sounds of it, it's what we hope happens when we do this. So what you had, so definitely go with it. Um, i just give you a brief explanation from my perspective, my experience and, uh, and what I know about the, uh, that process. That is, we want, anytime we do like a Qigong, Tai Chi, anything where we get the, the Qi really cranking, we want to throw it away because we don't want to hang on to energy. It's like hanging on to breath. You, uh, you breathe and you inhale, you let it do its thing and then you exhale. And if you hang on to it too long, it, it bad things happen. So you want, same thing with energy. Energy circulates throughout the body and then you let it go. And um, we ground the energy through the feet. So that's the yang chi comes down from the heavens, moves down through the body and then out through the feet. Yin chi comes up through the earth and that gives us the substantial element that gives us, you know, the the um, uh, supportive structure. So we have this, this constant flow going on. So whenever we, we clear at the end of, of that process, we're taking the energy down through the feet. And what that does is it, it's kind of like a s siphoning gas or something. You're kind of, you suck on it so that you get this flow going and then it just starts flowing. So uh, you, you are creating a vacuum whenever you clear. And so the yang chi, which is the, the chi of the heavens is coming down through, through the niwan point and then moving down and to, uh, through the chakras, if you're you know, from, a, from a, another perspective, but you're, you're, it's, it's moving through and then it circulates around and goes out to the feet. But if you have already started a flow going, then more and more comes in to have to join the party. And so we, then you keep, uh, you get more and more. And so it's not your chi, you're borrowing it, but it's just like it's not your air, it's just, you're just borrowing the air and you use it and circulate it and then you move it along. So we, um, that's what we do as, as, as human beings, we circulate this stuff. And uh, so, so yes, so go with it. Um, and the more you can get out of your own way, the more you allow that to happen, where you just feel like, ah, oh, you know, you're just constantly replenishing the big G. You're plugging into the big G and you're constantly replenishing. Okay. Definitely, cool. more than, thanks. <laughs> more than okay, good, <laughs> great. And then Scott, you had something. Yes, um, you had um, talked last week about how uh, Master Chen could break a board and not with a raw egg in his hand yeah. because he was so relaxed. Um, so I was assuming that that's a state we want to strive for. And then you would mention very briefly that we block ourselves from that state. So 
I would like to know how to not block myself from that stuff. <laughs> good, excellent. So uh, very good. So the, uh, you know, I, I, I've actually seen him do this on more than one occasion where he'll just put a raw egg in his hand and someone will hold up a couple of boards and he'll just smack through it. And he was doing it, you know, last time I saw it, he was in his late seventies when he was doing it. And I think he's done it since then also that he's in his, he's well into his eighties now. So, uh, uh, and he still does that. So it's a, um, uh, he uses what, what we call the, the Taiji punch, which is, it's, it's, a, it's a hand that has a hole in the middle. It's a, it's a fist that has a hole in the middle. And uh, this actually uh, kind of copies the shape of the hand. If you, if you ever worn boxing gloves, there's a bar in the middle that you, your hand wraps around so that you are not clenching your fist. Your hand is open when you're when you're wearing boxing gloves. So the uh, so a taiji fist is you can put your finger in there and just lightly wrap your fingers around the finger, pull the finger out, and there you got the uh, you got the the shape. So the um, uh, that's it. so the hand is is nice and um, it's not tense. You're not making a fist. That's not to say that there aren't other ways of, of doing this and and other uh, fighters use a very tight fist and that's fine, uh, but it's a different kind of thing. What we're looking for is is using Jin rather than Li, using energy expressed through the body rather than crude muscular force. So um, the idea is that he reaches out and you know, the thing he would always say is, oh, here's your coffee, here is your tea. And that is the kind of, of, of motion that we're, we're using. That is, you're just extending outward without the counter effort of pulling back. So when I would say that we're blocking ourselves, it's generally because whenever, if you make a very tight fist, really, really tight, and you just reach out in slow motion, you can feel the muscles pulling back. They're dragging on the system when you, when you do that. So there is a, that drag then actually uh, reduces the amount, not just of the energy flow, but also the, the amount of, of speed that you're able to get. So he makes a big deal. Master Chen makes a big deal out of, out of, you know, uh, mass times velocity as your, as uh, your thing, actually mass times velocity squared is the, is the, the, the idea that, that, that your, it's not just the mass of the fist, it's how fast it's moving that creates the effect. So he's actually able to move very quickly. And, you know, there would be, you know, there are early, early on, he would, you know, he'd be able to deliver like, you know, 15, 20 punches in a second, and it just and it was, it was like it just lightning, lightning fast. Is because he had no no resistance in his arms. So the uh, you know, we we talk about it relaxing, but that sort of um, gives a um, a wrong idea about what's happening there. I think that it's we are relaxing in the sense that we are not. Uh, creating counter effort. So we're relaxing the antagonist muscles. So the, but we are, uh, um, there is a connection there. And this is what gets to the real core of what makes this stuff work. And that is the tensegrity of the connective tissue system. So this gets back to the, um, I've been talking a bit lately about the the lost Taiji classics of the of the of the Yang family and uh, the secret transmissions. These are documents that were uh, written down in the late 1800s and not made public until the late 1900s. And uh, uh, the 20th century. So we've only we've only known about them for a little over 20 years, and uh, in that they talk about use you're using your sinews. 
which are the tendons and they are the connective tissue. So we're using that. So the, the uh, principle of tensegrity is one of the qualities that the connective tissue system has. So that when the punch goes out there, it's if you're, if you're releasing the, the muscular tension and you are extending and activating the energy of the system, then the whole system connects up so that you're actually punching with the earth. That is, there's a continuous energetic flow. So just as we were talking before about Lin's, uh, Lin's experience there with the, uh, with the yang chi of the heavens, this is where the yin chi of the earth comes up and acts to create a substantiality, a, a power that is, that is far in excess of, of the muscular, what muscular force can, can produce. And that's what's happening with the, with the punch there, that it just you're reaching out and you have that connectivity so that your whole body is going into that. It's not just not just an extension of, of my triceps reaching out and and pushing out. It's actually there's an extension through that allows the um, the this thing to go out, the arm to go out very fast. And whenever it makes contact, it is connected up to the whole system and rooted in the uh, in the foot so that it, the 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 punch is a very solid a solid thing instantaneously even though the fist is actually uh, very relaxed or in this case we'd, we I'd rather use the term sung to rather than relax sung means to release muscular tension and allow yourself to settle into the connective tissue system and it's whenever we get sung that we are able to connect up and we are able to feel the connective tissue system and you feel that tensegrity and that gives you that that tensile strength that uh, that whippy kind of tai chi energy that uh, that is uh, very light, very dangerous, very fast, even though we practice it in slow motion. We practice it in slow motion in order to get that awareness of the feeling of it. Is that, uh, that handle that, Scott? Gallery. Where are you? Where are you? Is that good, Scott? He said yes. Oh, okay, good. Okay, <laughs> I, I couldn't see you from the, uh, from from my view. So great, thanks. All right, so um, so that idea of sung is we are we're not just relaxing; we are feeling that underlying support. If we just relax, then we kind of puddleize, and there's no that's uh, there is uh, there's insufficiency in the system. To be able to make anything happen, so there's there's you know two errors that that or, you know, there's too much and too little you know that are called upon in the in the classics that that if you just relax that's too little you know if you over tense too too much so you want to find that it's where you put your attention is the is the key and that's why we slow this stuff way down so that we can learn to feel into the motion. This is a theme I've been talking about a lot lately, but I'm going to keep after it because it's something that uh, it's really easy to lose. It's really easy to lose, really easy to focus on what do I do next? And to miss the, the real important part, which is what do I feel next? You know, what, are, what am I feeling now is more, more accurate. And that is, if you can do that, then we're able to make a, uh, make a shift. We're able to, wh whatever we can do that, that opens the door to allow us to start to first perceive the energy and then understand the energy and then be able to direct it in uh, in meaningful ways, and the uh, if we do it 
this way, the runway is a whole lot shorter. It's not a question of, you know, just flailing about for decades and then you eventually it arrives. Aha! It's a, uh, it's something that you can grab onto very quickly if you, you know, slow it down. So it's one of those things like, you know, the, the hurrier I go, the behinder I get. It's uh, when one has to uh, really slow it down and, and feel into that. So I just want to read something to you from uh, something I came across in, um, in Master Cheng's 13 chapters on Tai Chi, Tai Chi Chuan. And um, uh, it kind of fits in with what I've been talking about lately. And he's talking about the, the different stages of development in uh, in Taiji, how you how you go from first from body to energy to spirit, and uh, uh, he's talking about the second phase, and he said uh, uh, the di difference is that there are distinctions in light and heavy, empty and full, or in other words, uh, substantial and insubstantial, and um, he says that. Most people do not pay attention to full and empty in the feet. Common martial artists also follow simple can follow simply follow convenience. Only practitioners of Tai Chi Chuan place all the body weight on one foot, chaining feet as required. It's also forbidden to use strength, and we should be relaxed and soft from groin to knees to heels. The power is located in the ball of the foot and it's received from the earth. This is exactly what I was talking about before. It's like, you know, the power is received, is located in the ball of the foot and is received from the earth. And uh, we must distinguish full and empty in the feet and also in the hands. So um, the... Uh, you, you recall I, I showed this picture recently. Can we get the uh, what's light there? There we go. I think it comes across. We'll it's up, uh, to up to the up, not down. Not down. <laughs> okay. Right. Too much light. Too much light. All right. So anyway, the uh, there's the uh, the big toe line, and that's the ball of the foot that we're talking about. Some people think that this whole area here is the ball of the foot, and that's fine, but that's what not what we're talking about in the uh, with the uh, uh, with this. We're talking about that that spot. So even just as you are, are right now, sitting or standing, just just press down with the ball of the foot just a little bit, just so you can and feel into that and and get the uh, get the sensation of that. So this is that location. And then it kind of spreads throughout the whole foot. So the weight is distributed throughout the whole foot, but that is the button you're pressing down on. So you may be able to notice something immediately happening in your body where anytime you do that. And just by comparison, go and move to the outside of your foot and put your attention there and just notice that and notice how the, what a difference that is. Now go back to the ball of the foot and just feel into that and notice how that affects your whole body. So we want to make that contact. So that is the substantial part of this process. The insubstantial part is the, uh, this right here where, I don't know if you can see it, but there's an X there. That's the, the bubbling well. And that's the insubstantial part. And that is where the energy comes up through. And a lot of people assume whenever they say, oh, ball of the foot, they mean the bubbling well. No, the bubbling well is the, it's the insubstantial part. That's the part that receives, that's the yin part that receives the energy. The yang part, you know, the, that, or the, not the, the substantial part around it is what provides the structure that allows that to happen. So, so like the, uh, you know, in the Tao Te Ching, they talk about that you have a, a bowl and uh, so the, the usefulness of the bowl is in the in the emptiness in this in the center, so that's the full and empty. We have so the fullness is on the uh, on the ball of the foot, 
and the, the structure around it. And the emptiness is the bubbling well, which allows the energy to move. So having that, an awareness of that, and I wanna make this very real to everybody because it, um, it's not just some esoteric thing, you know, that, oh yeah, if, when you get to a high level, then you can feel this. No, no, this is something you can feel now. And it, just by doing that, it's going to change your, your, your way of being. So if we get, we start with that, we're gonna do that and we're, we'll feel the energy that gets produced just by those feelings. Let's, so uh, why don't you stand up and uh, we'll play with this a little bit. So just feel, just allow your feet just to, to, to hang out there. And these are unlocked. And we're just gonna play with this for a moment just to feel the substantial and insubstantial. So I want you to rock back to your heels and feel that. So there's a very substantial piece there the, uh, in the heel. And just feel into what that, what that feels like in the rest of your body. Just feeling into the heel. Good. Now go back to the ball of the foot and allow your weight to settle over that. Still spreading out throughout the foot, but really focusing on that. That's the bullseye. And um, just feel the difference. Okay. And then go back to the heel. And just notice what happens to your internal state when you do that. Now go back to the ball of the foot and feel into that. Now allow your weight to settle on the outside of your foot. Go over to the, the lateral part on the, where a lot of us, when we're walking, we kind of drag our feet on the outside. You, you look at your heels and you notice that there's the, the heels are worn irregularly, maybe on the outside. You can see that uh, the, the effect that you know, that is having and it kind of creates this, this and reaffirms it. Once the, the shoes start to wear down, then you walk more and more on the outside. But go back to the balls of your feet now, feel along the big toe line and just feel into that. It's a very simple thing, very simple comparison there. So now, well, on the ball of the foot, just notice that place for the, the bubbling well. So right there in the, the center of the foot, just behind those, uh, uh, those knuckles you have the, for the, you know, the broader sense of the ball of the foot. And just feel into that. And, but as, a, as a, an insubstantial thing, I'll just allow the energy to move through that. Yeah, so now step out with your right foot. And pick up your left heel, your back heel. Feel the ball of the foot. Set the knee. And then without leaving the ball of the foot, spiral down to the right. So you're releasing the quad, spiraling down to the right, loading up that right leg as you do that, and then turn back to center. So notice that you're not rocking at all to the heel, you're not rocking to the side of the foot, you're just feeling it over the ball of the foot, spiral down to the right again, settle in. So as we release down, we settle in, this is sung. So as we sung, we engage the connective tissue system and then turn back to center. So even though you're turning, you're still sung. You're still down. You're feeling yourself into that receptive mode. Spiral down to the left. You're still feeling the ball of the foot. Doesn't mean your heel is lifted. It just means that you're feeling that. You can press down with the big toe also and just 
kind of feel that, but really the, the ball is the bullseye and then turn back to center. And spiral down to the left. You're releasing the, the muscles that want to push away from the earth and turn back to center. And go to your back foot, pick up your front heel. Feel the ball of the foot, set the knee and spiral down to the left, releasing, allowing yourself to settle, feel the sung. So even though we've done this exercise in other classes, lots of times, I want you to approach it from the perspective of brand new, turn back to center. You wanna feel that each time you're approaching this, it's, this is the first time, spiral down to the left, because you're feeling into it and it's new. This moment is new and turn back to center. There's nothing like this that's ever happened before. Spiral down to the right. If it is, then you're playing into a story, which is fine, but you're missing the fun. You're missing the fun of being in the actual radical present and turn back to center. Crawl down to the right. And this is what takes us into Taiji as a spiritual path. That ability to take us back to center, take us into the radical present predictably. I've never seen anything, never experienced anything that is as predictable as this for taking me right into present time as this, let's shift feet, bring your left foot forward, pick up your right heel, your back heel, feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee and spiral down to the left. Really release, sung. Yeah, turn back to center. And spiral down to the left. Spiral down to the right. And turn. Okay, so spiral down to the right and feel that. And then turn. Feel the ball, the, the right foot. Set the right knee, spiral down to the right. Settle in, release and turn. And spiral down to the right. And turn. Spiral down to the right. And turn. Spiral down to the left. Releasing, feeling into the support of your leg and turn. Spiral down to the left and turn. Spiral down to the left and turn. Good. And bring your feet parallel. And just feel into the energy. Release, settling down. Reaching with your knee one, crown of your head. As you sink. So what we've done here is by this releasing, unkinking the hose at the qua and making contact through the, through the bubbling well, supporting with the ball of the foot, 
then we are activating the chi. And we're allowing ourselves to get more and more familiar with that flow of chi. And each time we do, we allow a little bit more in, a little more through. We can utilize it in the body more. Step in, deep breath, and disappear the chi. Allow yourself to just dissolve into the moment and just feel. Allow that feeling to extend beyond the physical. But don't exclude the physical. Great, grab a seat. <laughs> you got something you want to say there, Lynn? <laughs> Just, oh, wow. <laughs> I definitely had everything flowing and going. And, and at, the, at the very beginning, when we, when we first stepped into the foot and the ball and, and, you know, settled down in there, I really felt that... Um, the, uh, the idea of the of the vacuum in the bubbling well. I felt that that opening up mm -hmm. this time in a way I hadn't uh, consciously felt before. I think I felt before, but I hadn't consciously felt it. So that was very cool. Nice. <laughs> Great. <laughs> uh, Valerie. Um, something that I've been uh, working on uh, I think it was last Wednesday and I'd asked the question about the punch and the claw and what is um, interesting is, and you said it tonight, feel the support of the legs. So the, the muscles of the legs are working, but the claw is still relaxed. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I think before I was trying to let everything just get sung and that wasn't working so well for me. Um, but realizing that the legs can work and the qua can be relaxed, can be sung, um, has just made things a lot more, um, I don't know, I won't say easy, but I'm realizing that, that yeah, the legs are working. That's fine. the The muscles are 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 supporting me, but the claw is open, um, and just light bulbs all the time. It's like, oh yeah, oh there it is. Yeah, there it is, and that makes this exercise much more rich for me. Um, so thank you. You're welcome. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. That. Uh, uh, that is, it's such an important thing you're, you're talking about there. That is that we're not letting the legs go. The, we need those legs to, to do leggy things. They, <laughs> they're, they're not, you know, they're, they're, we're not puddleizing here. When people say, oh, I'm totally relaxed. Okay, yeah, not really, you know, but there's a, you know, you're, Sung, and when we get sung there, then ah, oh, okay, oh, good. So the legs are doing the leggy things. So then the qua doesn't have to do the, the leggy things. <laughs> so it gets to do the qua things, and and it works a whole lot better 
doing the qua things if it is it is you let go of that the uh, that muscular tension which is really um, we've been carrying around you know since we were infants since we were you know toddlers when we first started to move around these things we had that you know standing up as was a real big deal and the way we stood up was weight in the heels and and trying to not fall backward. And so there's always this tension that kind of got stuck in the, in the program and it got carried forward. And we're still doing the same thing decades later until we start to feel into it and say, oh, do I need this? Maybe not. And then you can start letting go of things and say, oh, what do I, what would make this thing work, work better? And uh, then we can play around with that. Great. Stan, you got something? <laughs> okay. Uh, I, you may, I, while we were doing this, you mentioned something about uh, pressing down on the toe again. And I could see what's, uh, what I, when I do that. But what is the function of the toe pressing down? Uh, I just want you to feel it. I just want you to feel the toe pressing down. It's a, uh, it has as an effect, and uh, it's a little like pointing your index finger. Ah, okay. Okay, so it uh, has that, uh, it has that that effect. So it engages. It's an extension. So let me really uh, take a moment here and that extension that is reaching is the key to everything we do in Tai Chi. Yes. Okay, that everything in Tai Chi Chuan is an extension. Even, even when we're pulling, pulling down, we're extending as we do that. So whenever we are, whenever we do this, we <laughs> contract the muscles, then we are working counter to that. So the everything is extension. So that big toe going out like that, just feeling it that we're reaching out and just try it right now, just feel with your, your feet and, and the floor, just feel the ball of your foot. And then from that, just reach out a little bit with the big toe and just feel what that does it does something mm -hmm. and, uh, you know it's it's something that uh, that master chen emphasizes a lot whenever he's talking about punching he's always said you know, press down with your big toe as you as you punch ah. so uh you know it um it's something i don't generally emphasize just because it's enough get it's enough to get people to think about the ball of the foot that uh, yes. that's a uh, but it, 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 it's a thing. So if you're, if you're doing a standing meditation, you can just feel all the toes and just feel that because you have all these little acupuncture points in the, uh, in the toes that, that uh, you know, the end points, the beginnings and ends of, to, of uh, acupuncture meridian. So there's something going on there that you want to, you want to, you want to taste whenever that happens. And I don't, um, I'm not ready to talk about what that might be, but I'm willing to talk about the fact that, that as an extension, it creates more tensegrity in the system and allows you to activate more of your lower half and it awakens part of your nervous system that is um, ordinarily asleep. So um, I, th I would say I would say that in terms of uh, of that. So play with it and uh, get back to me and let me know what you're what you're experiencing there. Cool. Anybody else? Scott. So in uh, one of our recent conversations, um, a number of people, but uh, Rick Myers and Lynn particularly, were talking about um, not taking not taking your form you know, not taking your practice too seriously and a sense of playfulness. 
Yeah. And that really, you know, especially doing this stuff, it really helps me is to not take it too seriously. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Playfulness. Keep it light. Keep it because it's, it's, yeah, you, you don't want to have it so like, oh, I got to do my Tai Chi now. Uh. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. um, no, you, it's like, oh boy, <laughs> I get a chance to explore some more. So, yes, definitely. Okay, so let, uh, I want to get to the second topic I wanted to discuss tonight, and that is uh, uh, mobilizing. Uh, here's another thing from uh, the uh, uh, Cheng Man Cheng book. He just says that Tai Chi Chuan exercise is what is called mobilization first and then movement. Mobilization and then movement means that the mind moves the chi and the chi moves the body. Thus we proceed from the inner to the outer, that is from the internal organs to movement of the limbs. Okay, so, uh, you know, reading that 30 years ago, you know, I kind of had some, uh, I didn't understand what, what was going on there because it was, okay, so I get my chi and then I, my chi magically moves me, like, a, you know, doesn't, uh, it didn't click for me for a long time. But knowing what we know now and what we've experienced with, uh, with this stuff is that It's, and this is kind of in there, but you you only can see it after you know the you you know the joke. Say, so, oh, that's what I mean. It's uh, so it. If you are not don't have that tensegrity in the system, if you have not activated your connective tissue system, which is what they mean by the sinews, but they really didn't have the the full understanding of connective tissue because that understanding came much later. Um, that uh, if you don't have that, that understanding, the chi is seen as something different, something other. But whenever you are plugged into the, the big chi, you're feeling the tensegrity of the structure, then everybody's connected. So it's not like, oh, I'm going to build up this big mass of chi and then it's going to whoosh, push me along. It's, it's a, it's a continuum. So the mind leads the chi, but it doesn't create it. It doesn't recreate the wheel each time it happens. It's, it's just something that you become so familiar with the, with the energy that it's a, uh, it's, you're just moving it around. You, you start off by what we just did. You, you crank it up. So you have a full vessel. So then like uh, using the analogy of the garden hose, if the garden hose is, is half full, you're not gonna see much going out the, the other end. But if you fill up the garden hose, then a gallon of water coming in is a gallon of water going out. And so there is that continuum of chi that, that is, makes a, a solid connection that the, that whole system is one coherent whole the that body of water that there is you have this long hot dog there that is uh that is just it's it's one continuous thing it's one continuous column of of uh, of stuff that moves as a unit okay so your energy gets to be like that too but only if you got enough of it to fill up the hose and to, to remove the kinks in the hose. So ah, so when we get that going, then yes, the, <laughs> the E leads the chi, the mind leads the chi, because then it's just like, you know, you, you spray the hose wherever you want. Your mind can lead the chi and say, oh, it goes over there, goes over there, goes over there. But not if the hose is half empty. So you want to get it so that ah, you're, you're, you're releasing all this muscular tension. So you're unkinking the hose and you are filling up and really tolerating more and more so that you get more water pressure going out the hose. And then cool stuff starts to happen. 
So that's what you know, we're, we're talking about there. So the mobilization comes with having so much energy that you're able to generate a flow in any direction at any time. And it doesn't mean you're walking around with a full hose all the time, but that it's a, um, you, what I'm trying to give you is tools. To <laughs> you like that, Nick? <laughs> Not just not just wink wink. <laughs> Say no more. Uh, <laughs> so the uh, being able to direct that, you know, you're filling up, and you're able to. Uh, I'm trying to give you the tools so that you don't have to have that full up all the time, but you can fill it up very fast, meaning in a second or less. And that's where, and this will be a topic of our future conversation that is taking the three pillars, energetic coherence, central equilibrium, unkink the hose, and do what we've been, we call in, in class a uh, boom. That is, you are able to get all of those online fast. So we'd say, ah, oh, boom, you got, you got your three pillars in. Now what? Then we can go on to to play a game with it. If you don't have boom, then you don't have uh, the rest of the uh, the rest of the stuff. It's hard to lead the chi if there's not enough chi there going on to to lead. So that's the uh, um, that's the story on that. So now let's see what time we got. We got a few minutes. Let's. Uh, I want to just do a little mobilization. So shall we? Let's uh, let's mobilize. Okay, let's do the uh, lifting the sky exercise. All right. So the uh, feel the balls of your feet. You can press down with the big toe there if you like. Reach with your crown, your knee one. Bring your elbows out and feel that. Point with your index fingers. Feel the chi there. And then sun kwa, just get that so it's nice and release your ha, you're releasing down. Sung into your, into your legs. So notice that we're already starting off with a whole pant load of chi. So bring your hands, palms up and inhale as your hands come up. Over top of your head and then ro rotate your palms upward, round your arms and hold your breath for a moment. And then exhale and bring your hands down. Reach with your elbows, reach with your wrists, reach with your fingers. Arms come down. Inhale and reach, open the joints. And exhale, bring your hands in. Good. So now we got, we have some, we got a, a full tank now. So let's, let's play with this. And this time as you inhale, you bring the hands up, but feel it first and then do. Bring the hands up. Feel your arms, feel your elbows, feel your fingers, feel your breath, hold your breath, reach out with your elbows, push up with your hands, sink down. And exhale, reach out with your elbows, feel that. Here we're mobilizing the chi. The chi and the motion are not separate. Inhale, point, reach, open the joints, feel that. It's not separate. 
Now bring your hands up. Reach out your elbows, reach together with your fingers, sink, release your qua. Sung. You feel your hands reaching toward each other, but don't move. So here we're focusing on the mobilization. Pull your hands apart, but don't move. We're mobilizing the chi. Feel your body sink and your hands come up, but don't move. Press down with your arms, but and, and at the same time come up with the body, but don't move. Now feel the potentiality of all those motions. Mobilize for all of them and don't move. Good, and bring the hands down, reach with your elbows, reach with your wrists, reach with your fingers. Feel. Feel the fullness. Step in, deep breath, and disappear the chi. Empty out. Great. Okay, take a seat. How'd that go, Diane? <laughs> it's after you, after we disappear the chi, it's wonderful to feel it feels like a constant flow up and down and up and down beautiful so it's a really nice feeling beautiful rick you turn my body into a frat house <laughs> i tell i tell the bot i tell all the chi in the body last call you, you don't have to go <laughs> home but you can't stay here and they're sort of like going no, we're parting on. We're, you know, even as my hands are coming down to get rid of the chi, the chi is jumping back and forth between my fingers. Is there something I can do to get them to go? Or do I don't care? Because they're still partying. They're still partying, yeah. They're still um, partying. <laughs> you know, one, one thing that uh, that if if it's if it's distracting and you wanna you wanna disappear a bunch of chi, you can. Go up in your toes like this and then boom, just drop down. Okay. That Let's has see if that weird, works. That has a very nice grounding effect. Okay. Uh, there, uh, it, it helps to disappear a lot of chi. Because sometimes you're right, sometimes people have trouble sleeping at night. Yeah, <laughs> my, they, my, yeah, ah, yeah. My, yeah, my <laughs> chi just went. Party is just still going okay, on. Okay, okay. Yeah. You kids settle down, I'm gonna call the police. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Good, okay, so anybody else? Scott. So when you um, directed us to feel all the potentiality after doing all of that, yeah. 
Whoa. <laughs> I don't have any other words. Wow. That's really Comma, cool. dude. <laughs> hey, I am in California. I can, I can say that. Okay. Great. Dennis. I noticed it helped to have an awareness of the substantial of like the ball of my foot to find the insubstantial of the, of the bubbling well. To have the comparison. Beautiful. It, it made it easier to find. Great. It was nice to find that in that old Chang Mang Ching uh, thing. He wrote that back in the, uh, I think in the, the late 40s, 1940s. Yeah. Uh, when he wrote that. And so that's a, uh, a document that's been around a long time. And he refers to these secret transmissions and he refers to them as secret transmissions uh, in that this is decades before they were actually released. I think it was the 90, in the 90s that they were actually released. So it, uh, they'd been hidden for like a hundred years. And uh, so it, uh, yeah, uh, but it, he was, he was talking about it, you know, long, long before that. Cool. Anybody else? Stan. Uh, I, again, thank you. That, uh, we covered a lot of ground there. Uh, it's great. Uh, yeah, the workout wasn't it, uh, that long, but there was so much in it. Thank you. Great. Good. I, I really uh, want to make sure that you have a context for all these exercises. I can throw I can throw lots of Qigong exercises and things like that, but if you don't understand the context of it, nice. you're not going to get anywhere near the potentiality of just <laughs> that. Yes. <laughs> if, <laughs> if unknowingly, right? You know, I agree. It, it was, it's it's not how much you can pack up into here. It's what you can take in and, and experience with the whole the whole body mind. Oh, so, definitely, definitely. Thank you for playing along with me and uh, and enjoying in fun here because that uh, gets me uh, gives me a reason to <laughs> uh, to talk about it and it gets me excited. So, yay! Very good. <laughs> yay! Very <awesome>. good. <laughs> thank you, Rick. Great. Love you all. <laughs>